Hello, welcome to Shad Life. Today I'm going to talk about braking and more particular using the front brake. I'm going to demonstrate the difference between using only the rear brake between these two flags and I suggest you try this at home. Find two things you can put down on the ground and then do this test that I'm going to do here in a moment. And then so I'm going to do rear brake first and then I'm going to do both brakes. And what I'm showing here is how important the front brake is, how much more stopping power you get from the front brake than you get from the rear brake and using both brakes. Before we get into this, one of the most important things that you need to know if you're riding a mountain bike or any bicycle for that matter, but even more important on a mountain bike, um, you need to know which is your front brake. Here in the United States, if you buy a bike from a bike shop or whatever, your front brake is gonna be on the left. So I'm gonna turn around, your front brake's gonna be over here. <laughs> your rear brake's gonna be over here. Um, that is how we do it in the United States. Front brake is always on the left. Um, to remember this, you can always think right rear, RR, right rear. Um, so that means your right hand is rear. If you live in the UK and there's other parts of the world too, they generally swap them, just like everything else in the UK. They're really goofy over there. They drive on the wrong side of the road and they put their brake on the wrong side. <laughs> I just wanna see the comments, that's why I said that. Anyway, <laughs> so um, yeah, your brake is more than likely gonna be on the left side, your front brake. Um, but make sure you know, um, some people that ride motorcycles, even here in the US, they'll swap them just because on a motorcycle, your front brake is on the right where your throttle is, and then you have your little toe for your rear brake, and then your clutch is over here. So motorcycles are weird, but sometimes people that ride motorcycles, they swap their bicycle brakes because they want that familiarity. Um, I've ridden a motorcycle many times and I've never thought that <laughs> I needed to switch my bike brakes, but it is what it is. Just know which one it is and if they're switched, make sure you know that. Let's get to this thing here. Um, once you know which brake is which, um, I'm gonna ride my bike. The first one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do rear brake only and show you that I can't stop in this short distance just using my rear brake. All it does is skid. Your power isn't in your rear brake. I'd say 10 to 15% of your braking power is in your rear brake. The rest of it is in your front brake. So you wanna know how to use your front brake and know how to modulate it. If you don't know what modulation is, it's kind of like feathering it. Think of in a car where you can just gradually push the brake to just gently slow down. You don't dynamite it or floor it, right? And you can really control your braking with a car. Well, you can do the same thing on a mountain bike, especially with disc brakes which are what most mountain bikes, modern mountain bikes are equipped with, is you can really give that brake quite a bit of power and slow you down quite a bit without locking your front wheel or causing yourself to flip over the bars. So you wanna practice this and learn it and get really good with your front brake because when you get really good with your front brake, you can literally be like railing in a corner and realize, oh, I'm going a little too fast and you can feather your front brake and slow yourself down. Like, it's amazing how, how important brakes are and how if you learn how to properly use them, they become a really good tool. So let's go ahead and do this demo. Um, first run, rear brake only. Okay, rear brake only right when I get to the flag. Totally blew past. Okay, both brakes at the flag. So there is a huge difference between using both brakes and just using the rear. Um, the rear tends to skid a lot, uh, makes the back end fishtail around, things like that. Um, I do use my rear brake, but I don't give it nearly the amount of pressure that I give my front brake. I will squeeze my front brake a lot harder when I need to, especially in a case like this, um, because I know it slows me down more. And again, modulation is important. You don't want to squeeze your front brake too hard to where it'll cause you to flip over. It's actually 
a good idea to learn how to do an endo. I will do a separate video on that where you use your front brake and you actually intentionally cause the back wheel to come up. And the whole reason why you want to learn that is so you get an understanding of how the bike feels and, and when that will happen. And then by learning where that point is of where the back wheel is going to come up and how to counterweight it and everything, you will learn uh, the limitations of your front brake and where that braking point is. I talk about practicing a lot. Like if you're going to go out there and do, you know, gnarly stuff on a mountain bike trail, you need to really take time on the side to go into a parking lot or even a gravelly area like this and practice this stuff and practice, practice, practice and get really good at it. Because then that way when you're out on the trail, it just comes naturally and you're safer and you know what to do and you can push yourself a little bit more without crashing and things like that. I just see a lot of people out there that they don't practice these things, they don't know them and they get themselves into these situations and then they'll grab their brake. You know, a lot of times it's like going over log piles or through rock gardens or things like that. And they'll give it too much brake and then they end up crashing or they'll slide the wheel out to the side and things like that because they don't have that fine tuned capability of how to use their brakes properly. So this is an important skill. Um, starting with this one, find two objects go out, play around, learn how to break. Notice, I did a video, um, it was about doing drops, believe it or not, but the motion is exactly the same. That push the bike forward, shift your weight back. If you watch this again, and I'll play it again here. Push the bike forward as I get on the brakes. Um, I don't, you don't wanna lean forward and weight on the front wheel to get traction on the front wheel not in a quick stop situation like this going into corners and stuff you do want to weight the front wheel but in situations like this push the bike forward weight back just get on those brakes i've actually had to use this in cases where i'm bombing down a trail and somebody's coming the other way whether it's two-way trail or in cases you know in two-way trail i'm always kind of watching but there was a couple of times where people were going the wrong way on a one-way trail. And I've had to use this to keep from just plowing into them. So knowing how to emergency stop is pretty important. Just one of those things I think people kind of overlook. I even know people that ride with their brakes not fully working properly or they don't work very good and they don't care. They're like, I'm gonna go, or, you know, it's actually very dangerous to do that, so. Uh, there you have it. I appreciate your support from my channel. Please like and subscribe. Peace.